So we need to think of this problem as a bathtub overflowing. And one way to approach the problem is to return to a diet that's more similar to what we would hunt and gather, which is going to be lean meats, fibrous vegetables, and fruits that don't have a real high sugar content. And what it's not going to be is any refined carbohydrate that has to be ground up and turned into flour that produces quick and high spikes in blood sugar. So if we refine our diet to be more of a natural one, more like we would experience with hunting and gathering, then with this tub overflowing, what the diet represents is turning off the faucet. But the other half of the equation that's missing with that, and where exercise becomes synergistic for that, is to plug. And the way we do that is by taking the largest glucose reservoir in your body and emptying it out of glucose. So that creates a need for more glucose to be moved into the cell, which creates more insulin receptors on the surface of the muscle cell and makes you more insulin sensitive. When that happens, your serum insulin levels drop. And it drops into the single digits, which then becomes permissive for fat loss. And then, at that level, when your serum insulin levels are under control, your body auto-regulates very well towards being lean, which is its natural state. We have a genotype, a genetic code that's in us that is an active genotype. And when you're in the correct hormonal environment, it does auto-regulate towards leanness. And if you look at hunter-gatherer groups around the world, they are all very lean. Even traditional Inuit Eskimos who eat a diet of pure fat have a body fat on average of 11%, which is extraordinarily lean. Where things go awry is if you mess up your insulin sensitivity and your serum insulin levels rise, then you are chronically going to be in a storage mode, and it's going to be very difficult to mobilize body fat even at a caloric deficit. Well, so what gets the glucose out of the muscle? Well, when they asked Willie Sutton why he robbed banks, he said, that's where the money is. <laughs> when people ask me, why do I um, advocate high-intensity exercise, I tell them, because that's where the glucose is. Remember, we talked about hormone-sensitive lipase. Hormone-sensitive lipase is not just sensitive to insulin. It's sensitive to epinephrine and norepinephrine, or what's commonly called adrenaline. During high-intensity exercise, fight-or-flight type of exercise, adrenaline is activated and acts on hormone-sensitive lipase. But once it does that, it triggers what's called an amplification cascade. And what that means is the adrenaline attaches to hormone-sensitive lipase. Hormone-sensitive lipase activates one enzyme, which then goes out and activates 100 other enzymes. Each of those 100 go out and activate 100 others, so that one molecule of adrenaline attaching the hormone-sensitive lipase mobilizes hundreds of thousands of molecules of glucose. And the reason this is built into your body is it is a survival mechanism animal is most likely to need its catabolic fight-or-flight response when it is in the middle of an anabolic feeding event. You'll see them. You'll get attacked at the water hole. You have to be able to turn your metabolism on a dime from an anabolic state to a catabolic state, and the way we do that is adrenaline. When hits, we don't got to get that glucose out of our liver, circulate it around and get it to our muscles so we can run. It's there on site, ready to go. That's why we store glucose in our muscles. We need these opportunities to perform ferociously hard exercise because that is what empties out large amounts of glucose out of our body. In absence of that, we'll have chronically high levels of glucose in our muscle low insulin sensitivity, and high insulin levels. Insulin will trigger storage of body fat in a particular pattern that we all see. First it goes around your belly button, then it spreads. Then it goes to counterbalance, 
the fact that it's on the front of your belly so you maintain your center of gravity and then it spreads out from there. And the problem is, is these fat colonies are toxic. They produce a lot of um, biochemicals that circulate around that are really bad for you and produce a systemic inflammatory state. <coughs> Coronary artery disease and strokes, something that's long been thought a problem of fat metabolism and cholesterol metabolism, metabolism is really a downstream effect of this metabolic derangement. These chronically elevated insulin levels produce fat, which produces systemic inflammation. The walls of all your arteries are chronically inflamed and irritated. Your body synthesizes cholesterol to patch these areas of inflammation. And then these inflamed areas get sealed over, and if they crack open, well, guess what? You're going to have a heart attack. So the way to affect this is not to watch the fat content in your diet. It's to watch the carbohydrate content in your diet and perform high-intensity exercise so you can restore your insulin sensitivity. So that's how we cover fat loss in the book, and we do discuss diet and other issues.